Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reed, and today we're going to go over monomorphic ventricular tachycardia, VT, is the abbreviation for ventricular tachycardia. Don't forget that I do post the PDF uh, documents of uh, these ECGs down uh, in the description so that you can download them and actually follow along yourself and make your own notes or keep it for later, um, show your friends, because we all love ECGs. So um, let's talk about monomorphic VTAC. And so VTAC, as its name implies, is an arrhythmia that arises from the ventricles, and it is fast, right? So it's going to be greater than 100 beats per minute, of course, and it's going to arise from the ventricles. And so if it's arising from the ventricles, what does that mean if it's a ventricular origin? Well, we know that typically QRS complexes that arise from the AV node or higher they usually take this, pa this pathway, the his Purkinje system, to create a narrow QRS complex. But in this case, ventricular tachycardias come from somewhere in the ventricles, and they polarize the ventricles not via that pathway. And so that causes a wide complex. So this will be a wide complex rhythm. What does that mean? It's going to be greater than 120 milliseconds, the QRS in duration because it's not taking the it's nice his Purkinje fibers. And what else are we going to see? We're going to see something called AV dissociation. AV dissociation. What does that mean? AV dissociation occurs when the atria, which is the A, and the ventricles, which is the V, dissociate from each other, meaning that they don't communicate. And why does that happen? Well, you've got this focus in the ventricles that are firing off, some people, but not all people, actually have the ability in their AV node to capture that depolarizing signal. It can actually capture it and send it retrograde. Some people cannot do that. So essentially, some people can send it retrograde, but this is happening so fast that it's not going to do that every time. So sometimes you might see retrograde PUA, sometimes you might not. Other people might actually have a sinus node that's depolarizing the atria at a rate different than this focus that's depolarizing the ventricles. And so you'll get P waves. Essentially, you'll get P waves that do not have anything to do with these wide complex QRSs. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And so you see on this ECG here, what do we have? We have a wide complex rhythm, right? If you look at this V1 rhythm strip, We've got a QRS that is really kind of slurry, wide complex, right? Wide. It's greater than three little boxes, or it's greater than 120 milliseconds. What else is a feature of monomorphic VTAC? It's going to be regular, right? Notice it's regular. It is very, very, very regular. Okay. What else about it? It's going to be fast. Let's check the rate out. Maybe if I choose a QRS that lands on this solid line, like right there. We've got 300, 150, 100, somewhere between 100 and 150 to get to this point right there. So maybe this one is 125 beats per minute. So we've got a rapid, wide complex monomorphic tachycardia. But there can be other features of wide complex tachycardias, right? We could have a supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy right? And so what are some features about uh, this rhythm that make us think VTAC? Well, one, if it's SVT with a C, we're not going to have AV dissociation. So let's talk about the AV dissociation that we see in this rhythm. So remember that P waves, when they're generated, P waves are sharp, and T waves are broad. So we want to look on the broad T waves for any evidence of little sharp what we would call bites out of the T wave. And so if I look here maybe in lead two, you can see we've got this crazy looking QRS and we've got this broad T wave. And so I look across the T waves and then look what I see here. I see a bite out of it. That's a P wave on that T wave. But I don't see them on every single P wave. Look at this P wave. Notice it's got like an upward deflection. It's kind of pointy. That's another P wave. Same thing here, that's another P. 
right? You can see it in V1, right? Look at that little bite out of the T wave, but you don't see it on every T wave. You can see a little pointy aspect there, right? That's more evidence of AV dissociation. You see some P waves throughout the rhythm, but not consistently in any pattern. So that is our AV dissociation. And that tells us that the ventricles are completely dissociated from the atria. Something else that we see is we see something in the precordium, right, which is V1 to V6, we see something called concordance within the precordium. And what does that mean? That means that either all the precordium is all positive or it's all negative, right? Usually we see a change, but notice how we have upright QRS complexes in pretty much all of the precordium here. Maybe not in V6, but we have a positive concordance in this ECG. Something that you'll also notice in ventricular tachycardias is that the QRS axis should not be perfectly normal. Generally, it's kind of off. And if you look at the QRS axis in this one, you see my QRS is negative in lead two, it's negative in lead three, and it's negative in AVF. That tells me if it's negative in the inferior leads that my QRS is going somewhere from low to high. And that's highly suspicious with that QRS axis deviation to be a ventricular tachycardia. And so what are our features again of VTAC, especially monomorphic VTAC? We're going to have a wide complex rhythm. We are going to have AV dissociation because the atria and the ventricles aren't talking together. You're going to have potentially positive or negative concordance in our precordial leads. And you'll have an axis that is sometimes very deviated, right? And you'll sometimes see even positive forces in AVR. And we'll look at another example of an ECG in a minute. And I want to talk to you really quickly about the pathophysiology of VTAC. And what is the pathophys? Well, if we look at this chart, how do we get this monomorphic feature? Well, imagine most of these patients typically have like a history of a myocardial infarction, right? So they're going to have a history of a myocardial infarction, right? And what does that mean? That means that, say, in this patient, we've got this area right here. They had a infarcted. So this is all kind of scar tissue, right? So this is scar tissue. And that scar tissue struggles to conduct. So it has slower conduction, right? Because it's damaged. And so what happens is you can have a reentry where when a wave of depolarization kind of comes through the ventricles, that wave of depolarization takes a long time to depolarize through the scar tissue. It takes a longer time. And by the time it's done and exits that scar tissue, it'll depolarize normal ventricular myocardium from there. And you kind of get a reentry depolarization where essentially you can have a reentry pathway through the scar tissue that then depolarizes the rest of the ventricles and then it comes back again into the scar tissue and then back out, depolarizes the ventricles, comes back around. And so that is how the mechanism of previous scarring from a previous MI can actually cause ventricular tachycardia from a certain focus. That would be our focus in this case. There are other reasons for, for monomorphic VTAC, but this is a very common one, right? So people that have a recent MI or have a history of MI, you know, want to be really careful that they don't go into a wide complex monomorphic tachycardia from this reentry pathway. Okay. And so let's look at another example of a ECG of monomorphic VTAC. So what do we have here on this one? We've got a 
wide complex tachycardia. You see we're kind of tacking away. It's very regular. It's regular throughout the entirety of this strip. It's wide, right? My QRS is, uh, excuse me, it's greater than 120 milliseconds. So it's wide complex. So now we need to figure out, is this ventricular tachycardia or is this SVT with aberrancy, right? So what are our features of VTAC, right? We want to rule out VTAC. Well, we know that VTAC has a wide complex tachycardia. So let's look at the rate. We've got, if I look at this one, 300, 150. This would be 100, so it's maybe 120 beats per minute. So we've got a regular wide complex tachycardia. As I scan through, I'm going to look for AV. I want to look for AV dissociation, right? Because in ventricular tachycardia, you've got this depolarization of the ventricles. In the, it's happening so fast, the AV node can't send it retrograde every time. And you also might have some sinus node up here doing its thing at a different rate. But it's not being able to go and get passed down into the ventricles because the ventricles are blocking it because we've got this tachycardia. And so where can I potentially find AV dissociation? Well, I know P waves are sharp deflections and T waves are broad. And so actually, I have some decent evidence of it down here. You have to look in multiple leads, but V5 gives me a decent look, right? And you have to understand, you kind of look, right? So I'm looking here, I don't see any. Looking here, I don't see any. But if I look here, I have that little deflection, that upward deflection that looks like a sharp type of P wave that doesn't happen. I don't see that there. I don't see that there, so I compare it. I compare it, I don't see it there. And I continue to go, and I see another one. And I continue to scan through for any sharp deflections. You don't need many to diagnose somebody with AV dissociation. And so, really what I want you to get in the habit of is scanning through all the leads, right? Look up here in V4, you see this sharp little dagger that's not here, it's not there. That's AV dissociation, it's a little P wave. That's just the atria depolarizing, not in conjunction with the ventricles. Remember we said we had one on this P wave, well, if I scan up to my other ECG leads, look at lead one. You can see that nice sharp dagger there that I don't see anywhere else. So that's another evidence of AV dissociation. What are some other features of monomorphic VTAC? Well, notice that my precordial leads, V1 through V6, are all positive. Look at all these positive QRS complexes. So what do we call that? We would call this positive concordance, meaning that all the precordium is positive. That's very typical of ventricular tachycardia. And so you put all this evidence together and you say, yeah, I think this person's got VTAC, right? I've got negative QRSs in lead three and lead AVS, these negative QRSs in my inferior leads telling me that my Axis is probably going away from lead 3 and lead AVF. So you're starting to think this is probably ventricular tachycardia. I would actually venture to say this is definitely VTAC with all of these features. And it's monomorphic, right? Monomorphic. The morphology is the exact same throughout the entire strip. And that tells me that there is likely a certain focus, potentially of scar tissue, potentially of just hyper excitable cells in the patient that are firing off at a rate of 120 beats per minute. So I hope this helps you kind of understand and have a framework to approach wide complex tachycardia to help you diagnose a monomorphic VTAC because um, these patients need uh, treatments that are um, you know, urgent, and if you give them the wrong treatment, you could throw them into a worsening kind of VTAC storm. So um, identifying that is important on 12-lead or on a rhythm strip. So 
I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, throw them down into the comments. If not, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel, and we will see you um, on the next ECG video. Take care.